Hey everybody, I'm Corbin Hosler. I am here today with my first video for TCG Player, and I am going to be doing my best to dive as deep into modern as we can go. That's going to mean a lot of fun decks, a lot of fringe decks. You're not just going to see me grinding um, the best back in the format, which is Merfolk, or any other tier 1 decks or anything like that. We're going to be trying to find fun decks on the edges of modern to play, possibly some budget brews in the future, um, sort of see where it takes us, but the, the goal here uh, it's just basically to mine modern as deep as we can go. So here's the first one today. Uh, this is a pretty sweet one that I've been working on myself. Um, this is a deck that has existed since uh, Old Extended, uh, when it was double standard. And it's green-white trap, essentially, um, only with a modern take on it that's really good. So I'll walk you through the deck here. Uh, okay, so basically what we want to do is attack with an Emrakul. Uh, we want to attack them, make them annihilate 6, do 15 damage, and kill them. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. In fact, there's several. Um, let's go ahead and start with what is the best way, um, and that's Wimbrisk Kites. So Wimbrisk Kites, it's a hideaway land from lore. When, when it comes into play, you look at the top four, uh, and you can put a card face down underneath it. So then to activate it, if you have attacked with three creatures, you can pay white and tap this and, and activate it. So what we want to do is put our Imrakul underneath our Wimbrisk Kites, attack with three creatures, and then activate this, which actually means we get to cast the card. So we get to cast Imrakul, which means we take an extra turn, and then we get to kill them. Uh, the deck is capable of doing this on turn three, uh, at the earliest, if we go Temple Garden into a Mana Dork, into a turn to Wimbrisk Kites, hide it away, Emrakul, uh, and play Ness Invader, which creates three bodies for us to then attack on turn three with and, and cast our Emrakul. So that's sort of like, that's the deck's ultimate plan. Um, outside of that, we have a lot, a lot, a lot of different ways to make the Emrakul attack happen eventually. Um, so we play seven Mana Dorks. We play four Lotus Cobra, because this deck also has lines where on turn two you play a Lotus Cobra, on turn three you play a Fetch Land, you crack your Fetch Land, or that gives you five mana, which is conveniently enough for Through the Breach to put our Emrakul into play and attack. Uh, if we don't have Emrakul, we can put in Primeval Titan and attack with it, which gets us four lands, which is a pretty crazy ramp spell um, and just by itself, but those lands we're getting are Windbrush Kites, and the other one being Moss Warp Bridge, which activates if you have total power 10 or greater on the field, uh, with the goal of putting Amber Cools or more Primeval Titans underneath them. Uh, Dryad Arbor is another way to sort of get a creature uh, with the land, um, as is Colony Garden, which puts an 0 1 plant into play, which is pretty nice for blocking uh, when you play your Primeval Titan, and also it's a body uh, to swing to activate your Rimbrisk Kites. So moving on past that, um, you know, you see the, the mana dorks and then more mana, basically Lotus Cobras Nest Invaders. Uh, Knight of the Reliquary is both a ramp spell, because you can tap the land for mana and then sacrifice it, go get a land untapped. Uh, or it can fetch out the special lands like the Wimbrus Kites or um, either the Moss Warp Bridge or the Keswick Wolf Run, which uh, is a good one as well. Keswick Wolf Run allows us to, one, give something trample, so sometimes... If the game's gone weird and you've done some damage but you haven't killed them, whatever, then Keswick Wolf Run on just, you know, a Mana Dork or something when you've made a lot of mana will kill them. It also allows you, say you're at 6 power on the board or something, uh, you can give a creature plus 4 plus 0 to get to 10 to activate the Moss Warp Bridge, which will allow us to play our Hideaway card. Um, so neither Reliquary also, by the way, just turns out to be a 5-5-6-6 five, five, six, six beater a lot of time. Uh, it's basically the perfect card here in the middle. Quicksilver Amulet, just more redundancy to get our big guys into play. It allows us to do it at instant speed at the end of their turn. So if you play against a deck that just kills, um, you know, your first couple guys, well, you just play this on turn four, put your Merkul into play on turn five, and go from there. Uh, Summoning Trap also rounds it out here. Uh, you can just cast this for six mana uh, to get something big off the top seven cards of your library, and that does a lot of work in itself. Uh, alternatively, uh, because of its first clause, the trap clause, say they, you know, they mana leak your Knight of the Reliquary, where you just get to fire this thing off for free and go get a Primeval Titan or an Emrakul or, you know, something along those lines. Um, so that's the main deck, with the exception of this one last one, the Cloud Goat Ranger. Um, this seems like a weird one, but it's it's sort of in the testing phase. I think it's really good though, because one, a lot of times you have five mana on turn three, but not six. Say you have Mana Dork into Mana Dork, whether that's you know a second Mana Dork or um, a Ness Invader, or, you know, if you go Birds, turn two, neither Reliquary. Um, all of these combinations leave you with five mana on turn three, which is great for your Through the Breach and, and all of this, but it does not allow you to cast any of these six cards. So this is just sort of a nice one here, and this is very good because it is four bodies by itself, which is good for your Wimpress Kites. 
you can tap the Kithkin to give Cloud Goat Ranger plus two plus zero, which makes it a five three, which gives you eight power towards Moss Warp Bridge just by itself. So just a Nest Invader and a Cloud Goat Ranger can allow you to activate Moss Warp Bridge. Um, so that's the deck. I mean, that's that's really it right there. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to attack with Um uh, Moving on, we just got the sideboard. A little Path to Exile when we want, you know, against Infect or something like that, where you want a piece of removal. Uh, rest for the Weary for the uh, aggro burn matchups. Um, this is better, I think, than Feed the Clan because we don't often have a creature with four power um, <laughs> since our only ways to actually do that are, you know, either through Exalted Triggers or whatever or a big Knight. Um, but then if we have this sort of stuff... We don't need that. But this is just play a land, gain eight life, basically buy yourself two turns. Uh, after that, just rest in peace. General um, hate you can play. Timely reinforcements. Stony silences for affinity. Ancient grudges. Uh, more relics for graveyard hate. So just sort of a generic sideboard, but powerful cards um, themselves. So that's the deck. Now let's jam some matches with it. <laughs> 